What the f On my way to Copart to pick up a win. And just like last Tuesday, what the heck? I can't get a break with these thunderstorms. Hopefully it stays clear because I've got some cars I wanna look at while I'm over there. Anyways, uh, almost at Copart and uh, hopefully the weather will hold for us. Whoa, do you guys just catch that lightning? And my house is over there too, yikes. <laughs> Same stormy backdrop as last Tuesday. Here's the first one I'm looking at today. This is, I think, a 97 uh, F-150 four x four, which is hard to find down here. And why I was interested in this one, in the listing pictures, they had the rear wheel chalked. And I also noticed that, which often happens with these, the shifter is slightly out of alignment and that can cause it not to start because it thinks it's in reverse. So looking at it here in person, holy smokes, I gotta be quick. Rust, as these typically do, as mine has, it's definitely way rustier than I thought. I'm the high bidder on this thing at 200, but just like the other four looked at last week, that's my high bid. I'm not going any higher, at least yet. And based on what I'm seeing, I don't think that I will, but let's quickly see if my theory was correct. Let's see if we get anywhere with that. Booster packs hooked up and I think, let me see here. Yep, showing 13 volts. Do a quick oil check before I start it. So this is, it's a little low. Well, granted, because I had some guy get in a 10 comment argument with me about this in another video. That's not the correct way to check the oil, obviously. But, you know, usually if you see something on the dipstick, you're kind of close. So let's see if my theory was correct that this will start by just jiggling up on the shift lever. Got power, and let me see. I'm gonna put the camera down here. So she is a run and drive. I don't have it marked as one. Um, you have to put it in neutral. So I could still be the same issue, misaligned shifter column, or it could be a neutral safety switch or something. Uh, the brakes are low, they're to the floor. And you can tell it just does not run well. I'm the high bidder at 200 and that's exactly where I'm gonna stay. This is an inline six, I didn't even check that. I was hoping it was a 5.4 truck. Transmission fluid looks okay. Again, that's not the correct way to check the level. It's got a manifold or an exhaust leak of some sort. Now I want to see, I guess in theory, see if the AC works. I want to see if the, uh, four-wheel drive works because that's really the reason you'd buy this oh my god that does not want to budge I would think you would just I'm in neutral right because this is well I don't even know if I want to put this thing in drive let me see well, we've got drive We've got reverse. These are pretty stout transmissions in these, so I'm in neutral. And this transfer case is just stuck. I don't want to break it, uh, especially if I end up with this thing. I don't think I will. Well, who knows? <laughs> but I could definitely get out of it at this price. I could junk it for more, but I'm not going any higher. But it is a runner, and we may actually have cool air Got power steering. So I'm pretty familiar with these older Ford trucks, these bubble body Fords. I bought and sold a lot of them. I've got a 01 with 315,000 miles, 5.4. I've had it forever. And yeah, the AC does work. You hear the clutch, it's low. That's why it's circulating the clutch so much, but 
Uh, it is blowing cool, so obviously you get a minor leak somewhere and a top off's required of Freon. But yeah, I mean, she's a runner, so we'll have to see if, uh, oh, see that? <laughs> Feels like reverse. Yeah, so it won't go into park. Uh, this thing's in rough shape. My theory is confirmed on this, as I've been saying. Uh, I figured it was gonna be something with the shift selector and uh, it does run, but it's rough. It's rough, these trucks aren't worth that much to begin with compared to GM trucks of the era. They bring a lot more money. And uh, that's why years ago when I was young, I started with these trucks because when the GM trucks were still really expensive, you could, still, you could buy these pretty cheap. The frame looks okay. It's definitely got some surface rust. I do believe this truck was from somewhere in the salt belt for most for a good chunk of its life, I think for the first several years, and then it came down to Florida, but uh, not that bad. And one of the reasons I was interested in this is my bed on my uh, 01 is rotted out badly. And this one's actually really nice, surprisingly. Uh, my trucks get the same rust, the cab corners, the rockers, and this one does too, but the bed's nice. And it's even got a nice plastic liner and a toolbox so i won't be too upset if i win this for 200 but i'm not going any higher than that i don't think it's worth the headache so on to the next one let's beat the storm okay so here's one you guys probably didn't expect me to be looking at but i used to buy sell and fix a lot of hondas you know why because i don't get attached to them like i do with all the gm stuff and end up wanting to keep it so I wanted to see just how bad the damage was here if it went beyond just bolt-on parts. And it does appear that it would need these spot welds taken out and this piece here replaced, this piece of the unibody, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. It's technically really just a support. Oh no, I guess it also holds the subframe. So this is certainly a little bit more than just bolting on a fender, but uh, not horrible. But this is just one of those ones where I have a feeling it's going to go for too much because it's a Honda. So you need a fender. It looks like the door was not affected by this at all, which is good. You don't have to worry about messing with the door or the hinges. Let's just take a quick look. It is starting to rain, and uh, that storm continues to move closer. So uh, I don't think I'll be successful acquiring this one. Okay, we're going to have to give this a jump. Uh, but I have to assume this thing probably runs fine. It's only got 70,000 miles. Question is, is the hood open? It sounds like it does. Okay, so hood open. Uh, I can't tell if this strut tower was affected at all. It doesn't look like it or very much at all, but that is something to be concerned with. Looks like the engine's still sitting where it should be. Still got a Honda battery, which I love to see but it will be a salvage title, a rebuilt title. Starts right up nice. Hope we got air because I came here thinking there'd be no sun and uh, boy was I wrong. <laughs> so, oh, you certainly do. I may sit in here for just a moment and uh, cool off and review this Honda. Um, power steering's out. I don't know if the pump was affected or uh, if there's any damage to the rack. And uh, you also have to keep in mind with these. So I see it goes forward, goes backward. What do you expect? 70,000 mile Accord. I mean, otherwise this is gonna be a phenomenal vehicle. It's got the excellent 2.4 K24 four cylinder, a uh, heck of an engine. Problem with this one is it's gonna bring big money because it's an Accord, low mileage and Again, for a body shop, this is a one day ordeal, but you also have to keep in mind the fees here at Copart, they can get pretty astronomical. And then there's also here in Florida, a rebuilt title like this, you gotta pay a $300 rebuilt inspection fee and your value's diminished at least 50%, being that it's a rebuilt title. So the margins might get tight. This might be one of those ones that's better for a buy here, pay here. But man, the AC is nice, so. I've got one more to check out. I should probably do so right now before this uh, weather gets uh, any worse. You can see, by the way, that Range Rover we talked about last video, uh, it sold yesterday for 4,250 before fees. That's gonna be an expensive one. That's like five grand out the door. 
maybe even a little bit more. On this Accord, it's looking like it's gonna be a no. Uh, I'm actually kind of glad, same with the truck over there because I got a lot of cars I'm bidding on this week, including at other locations, which just due to time constraints, I won't be able to go check them out. Let's move on to the last vehicle for the day. So this is an interesting one. I like to look for the interesting ones, you guys know me. This just got uh, listed only a few days ago and they're already gonna run it tomorrow in the auction. And apparently it comes with a free Porsche. Oh, well, they left it out in the weather. <laughs> I don't know, Porsche, uh, like a DVD book or something, VHS, but I doubt it's that. So this is a 34 or 37 thousand mile. What the heck? With the temp tag sitting on the dash from 2006, I don't think this is an 06, it's an 04, so there must be a two owner. 34, 37,000 mile Impala that was marked with bio stickers. So, oh, here's the truck from last week. It still hasn't sold and it won't be selling to me. I don't think it's worth it. I got a lot of other better options, but this looks like an old bio sticker. So that when this thing get picked up, because even the Copart sticker on it, it's weird because he just listed it. But this has been here a while. You can tell by the sticker. Pickup date, June. Yeah, been here a while. Lost type water and flood, but it's a donated, I think. No, it's Geico. Okay. Let's see just how bio this thing really is. Yeah, it definitely smells a little moldy in there, but I mean, honestly, some of my own cars are probably like this. I'm gonna let it air out just to be on the side of caution, but I mean, everything's, you can tell water was in here. You can see there's some rust, but that could even just be, well, you can even see there's like chunks of rust on the floor from the seat tracks. I guess someone moved in and it just knocked off all that rust. So it could have been flooded. Uh, is there a water line? Any evidence of a water line? I don't really see any, and there's some rust on that hinge there, but I don't think that's enough to draw any conclusions. And there's some rust on this hinge. That's weird. Could have been flooded. That's mold right there on that e-brake. And on the steering wheel. So we'll definitely leave the doors open on this one. <laughs> but honestly, it's not that bad. I guess it's been sitting out here in the sun. It could have had a lot of mold in it. The sun just kind of killed it all. But definitely looks like a 30,000 mile Impala. I mean, the headliner, there couldn't have been that much water in here because if there was all that moisture, this headliner would have started sagging for sure, especially with the heat beating down on it. So this one's a little risky. And they have it marked as a non-run. Now I gotta check the oil. It looks like these carpets were definitely wet at one point, uh, just by the way the fabric looks. And like as if someone sucked all the water out Got some gloves. I don't know if that's from dealing with it being all moldy. You can see mold on the center console. It's white mold. Nothing's gonna kill you, but let's see, will it be like my Elante water pouring out of the glove box? There is surface rust on the hinge, but I see that stuff all the time. That seat is stuck. It is stuck. Now that might not be from rust. Could just be there's something jammed on the track, but so this is also listed as a non-run, and we're gonna find out why. Just a really interesting one with the temp tag from 06 sitting there. Oh, look at all the algae on the AC compressor. A lot of corrosion in general all over the engine and engine bay for a Florida car. I think this was Florida since new, what's that say? Yeah, it's a Florida temp tag if I've ever seen one. A lot of corrosion, so I don't know, maybe somebody's canal uh, flooded up. This is a weird one. I guess it all depends on the price, like a lot of these, you know. You, but the way scrap values are and cat values are, you really can't go wrong if you're under a certain threshold to... Well, the oil looks more than fine. That's good at least. Definitely feel comfortable putting some power on it. Sometimes with these side post batteries, the guys here just don't get a good connection on them and the cars don't start. We'll just list them quickly as a, uh, a non-run. That's why you always gotta come check if you can. 
this is typical old deck school. I wouldn't say that's indicative of a cooling system issue. It just looks like old deck school. It's probably the original from 2004. I mean, the engine looks really clean inside. I, all I see, you guys won't be able to see it, but all I see is nice, clean, golden oil. How are our tires? Dry rotted, I can already see that. Have we got a date code? 08. Yeah, these are due for replacing. Definitely vindicates the low mileage. Got the booster pack on it. Let's see what she does. So here's another one, right? It was marked as a non-runner. It does run. Sounds like it hasn't ran in a long time. If you heard the way she was cranking over, I didn't like the way it cranked over. You know, it almost sounded like there was a compression issue or something. Not really, but the, the crank was very uneven. But I don't want to rev it too much. Obviously, it hasn't started in a long time, but it does run and it seems to run very smooth. Let's go look at the tailpipe and see how that's looking, see what's coming out. So a little bit of, I didn't even want to call it white smoke. I mean, it's just really moisture, especially something that's been sitting this long. Let's look underneath it. That might tell part of the story, how rusty. Oh, wow. This is very rusty for a supposed, floor. yeah, I see all the moisture coming out of the muffler. Dripping out the little drain hole. That's why you have all that smoke. I don't think this thing has a blown head gasket or even bad intake gaskets. I mean, it sounds like it runs pretty well to me. But again, because of the undercarriage rust, which there's quite a bit, this was sitting in like a swamp or something. That's what I think happened. And maybe the water got up high. Again, a little weird, but let's see uh, if you guys see any smoke, any bad smoke. No, I don't see any smoke. I don't think there's uh, any issue with the engine besides that weird crank, but uh, certainly I think it could do that if it's been sitting that long like that. It could have a kind of a weird initial start. What I'll do is I'll shut it off in a minute once she gets up to op temp and uh, try again. We'll see how it sounds cranking over. If it sounds crappy, we need to keep that in mind, but <laughs> it sure runs nice. I'll tell you that much. This could really end up being a, uh, a score if you get it for the right number. She's just been sitting a long time. You can see the cobwebs on everything. It looks like it's gonna need brake lines and see how our electronics are working since this was a flood car. Let's see what warning messages we have on the dash. Well, an alleged flood car. Windows work, door locks work. Oh, no way. Okay, now the air is on. Could have just been because the battery voltage was so low at the initial start. Yeah, that's working. Beautiful. Let's check the different. Oh yeah, that's working fine. Radio works. Got a brake light on. Let's uh, see if we got no brake pedal. Oh yeah. Brake pedal's low, so one of those crusty brake lines certainly could have popped. Um, I do smell deck school already. Low brake fluid, yep. Door ajar, anything else? No. I don't want to stick my head in this thing too long. So, this is an interesting one, as I keep saying, but it is. Is our AC compressor engaging? It is. It is, for sure. I think it's also low on Freon because it's not blowing that cold, especially in this heat. That engine sounds like it runs real nice to me. That's all I can say. But we've got some concerns with the rust and the flooded condition. I mean, you got to yank the carpets out, the seats out, pop the door panels off, make sure there's no mold hiding underneath those, run a nozo machine in it. All right, let's just try to start it again, see how it sounds.
I think we got a case of just a really dead battery on that crank. It didn't sound so bad to me. Just a really dead battery. It was cranking over and then the voltage dropped so low that it went and then it kind of got a kick of voltage again and started. So battery's charging. 14, uh, showing 14 volts there on the uh, booster pack. Huh, this is a cool one. Let's see if in fact, and I'm sure it is, our brake fluid is low. Oh yeah, there's no brake fluid in there. Transmission fluid. Looks like the original, not horrible. All right, this is definitely one now I'm gonna throw a few bids on. Now I know that it runs and runs fairly well. I think I'm the high bidder right now at 200, which is just where you start out at. Let's just take another look at that oil. See if any water came to the dipstick. No, I don't think this engine ever saw water. I'm just gonna check in the spare tire well and see if we have a bunch of water. All right, let's see. All right, there is some water in here. Oh yeah. Look at the corrosion even. This is almost like a saltwater flood with all this corrosion. Like the, especially here in South Florida, this might've been parked by the ocean somewhere. And we had a uh, storm, tide came up high and this thing just got covered in salt water inside and out. Uh, so now I'm not so interested in this one all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't think it's uh, worth the gamble. guy's gonna have to be my eyes there it doesn't look like it has water but it also looks very new so again it's possible that somebody changed the oil and the air filter all right i gotta get out of here let me go pick up that yukon it's really hot i didn't think we we're gonna have sun i didn't put on sunscreen and uh, i think my arms are getting absolutely roasted over here that impala my feeling is if it stays i don't know really cheap cheap enough where again i can scrap it if i had to i'll buy it just for the entertainment value for you guys and for me i do it just as much for me as i do for you you know i love these cars these mystery cars and seeing if i can get them back to good order or or not we'll see on that one but it's gonna have to go cheap especially with the other options i got this week i don't want to bring home too much junk okay so if you've stuck around this long i appreciate it um i just wanted to close out the video i did not end up buying any of those three vehicles that i showed in this video i did bid on all three what sweetheart what's going on tag along baby girl uh i guess tag along's not too happy with me for not buying any of those but i'm happy i didn't buy any I just don't think they were worth it with the other options I had that week. This being one of them, I don't want to give any more away than that. I don't want to spoil the video for you. So uh, let's move away from this one and I will show you two more. And how about a quick update on my Range Rover here? Absolutely love this thing. I drive it a few times a week at least. Really the reason I haven't started driving it a lot more than that is I have been waiting on, and it should be here any day now, a service kit for the transmission uh the transmission it's never slipped or done anything weird i just don't like those slow shifts it does into reverse and drive it runs strong drives nice air suspension's been fine even if i let it sit for several days the air suspension does not deflate so this one here i bought a few months ago i'm not going to say much about it i don't want to spoil it too much but Again, I just wanted to give those of you who stuck around to the end here on this walk around a little extra content since I didn't end up buying anything in this particular walk around. But I bought this a few months ago. I just haven't got around to doing what it needs, which you'll find out in the video, but I am gonna put this video out soon. I just want the video to have a bit more substance to it. So I'm waiting on some parts and then I'll go ahead and put the video out. So that way it's more than just showing the vehicles. But on this video here that you just watched, like I said, I bid on all three to a certain point. The Impala went for, with fees, close to 700. I mean, it's low mileage, but it would be a rebuilt title. And it was obviously in a saltwater flood based on all that corrosion. I just didn't think it was worth it. With all the other projects I have around here, I let that one go. 
The Accord went for way too much money. I can't remember what, but well over 2000 before fees. Again, just not worth it. For a body shop, that was a good buy, not for me. And lastly, that F-150, kind of the same deal as the Impala. It was just too rough and not really worth it after the fees. That went for a few bids over the minimum. It was 300 something before fees. That's gonna do it, guys. Thanks for watching and keep an eye out for the next one.